Hey, welcome back. This week I'll be making a Paraguayan corn bread, cake, pie. I'm not sure what to call it, so I'll just call it Chipa Guazu. To get started, we need about a kilo or two pounds of corn kernels. That works out to be about eight or nine cobs. Now it's getting towards the end of the season here, so the only corn I could find was these trimmed, semi-husked ears that were shrink-wrapped. Generally not the highest quality or sweetest corn you can find, but for this purpose, since we'll be baking it, it doesn't really matter too much. In fact, you could use canned corn. It would just come out a lot sweeter. So I want to remove what's left of the husks. And no need to throw those out. You can make a corn husk doll for your child. Into a bowl, I'm going to cut off the kernels by running my knife down the side. And no need to throw out the cob. You can make a corn cob pipe for your dad. Now we need to puree these in a food processor or blender. I'm going to work in batches so everything fits. So I'll add half the corn. I'll crack four eggs. And add two of those in. A pinch of salt. and some freshly cracked black pepper. And the recipes I found while researching this varied greatly on the amount of milk that they added. Some called for a cup, some called for half a liter, but they all basically said to add the milk in slowly. Basically, we want to work our way to a pasty consistency. So I'll add that in little by little and blend it all together. Next up, we needed some Paraguayan cheese. Now, that's pretty hard to find where I am, but I was able to get my hands on basically every other country's fresh cheese. So I've got Peruvian and Colombian here, which I figured would be close enough to Paraguayan. Now, the texture of both of these is basically the same. It's kind of like a brick of mozzarella, but a lot wetter and a little bit more crumbly. And the flavor is very similar to that as well. The only difference between these two is a slight grassiness in the Peruvian version. They were basically identical. Now you could use as much or as little cheese as you want. I'm going with 500 grams or about a pound. I'll crumble that up. And add it on in. Next up, to add a little bit of savoriness to this, I'm gonna dice and saute an onion. You could add more or less if you want, it's really up to you. And I'm really digging this new dicing technique that I learned from Dan Sousa at America's Test Kitchen. Rather than fiddling with horizontal and vertical cuts to your onion, cut it vertically the whole way across, cut it in half, rotate those halves 90 degrees, and now you can cut some more vertical cuts makes the whole process a lot easier. I'll get a pan going over medium-high heat. I'll add in about 50 grams of butter. And once that's melted, I'll go in with the onions. Saute those until they're just translucent, but don't take on too much color. Then remove them from the heat. And add them into the food processor.
Give that a final blend. Adjust for consistency if needed. Now I'm going to grease a baking dish with some more butter. Pour in both batches of our corn batter. Mix those two batches together in the pan just in case they're a little bit different consistency. Now I'm going to throw that in a preheated 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit oven. And most of the recipes said to put it in for 30 or 35 minutes, but I wasn't getting anywhere near the color or consistency that I saw on the photos attached to those recipes, so I ended up leaving this in for about 50 minutes. Now you could also crank up the heat to 190 or 200, but then you should pay extra attention that it doesn't burn. Once it comes out, you can test that it's ready by stabbing it with a knife and seeing if it comes out clean. And while we let that cool down to an edible temperature, go ahead and make a cup of coffee, or an ergo mate, because this is most commonly served like that, as a snack with some coffee. And this is a really interesting concept. It's got kind of the flavor of creamed corn, but in more of a casserole form. You could add more eggs if you want it to be more fluffy. You could add more cheese if you want it to be more cheesy. You could use less milk if you want it to be more dense. Overall, it's a very pleasant, very corn-forward side dish that you could totally serve at Thanksgiving or a summer cookout or alongside a nice cup of coffee. So I hope you guys give this a try. Let me know in the comments if you do. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more of these recipes every week. Become a patron if you want to support the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.